day. My name is Olumi De Adele, and it's good to have you all here, particularly because I have someone special with me. So on this channel, I've talked extensively about BCS, the British Computer Society, um, which is also known as BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. And I'm happy to let you know that today I have with me um, the international director is known as Steve and he's going to tell us more about himself but he's also going to tell us more about BCS as an organization. So Steve, you're welcome Thank to you. my channel. It's, pleasure. it's a pleasure to be here. It's exciting to be back in Nigeria and um, to be working with good partners, accredited training providers like yourself. Yes, and yeah. it's, it's really good to have you in Nigeria. I hope you've not suffered from Lagos traffic. <laughs> Everybody suffers Lagos traffic, <laughs> I, I believe. There's no way around it, okay, literally. So, um, well, the, the good thing is you have years of experience being in Nigeria, mm -hmm. so I'm sure you're used to it yes. by now. Um, so anyway, let's just get straight into this. Um, BCS, what exactly is BCS? Wow, well, it's a big organization. There's about 250 staff. Mm. We are the Chartered Institute for IT, and in which, in which we're responsible for maintaining standards and professionalism in the IT industry, uh, based in the UK. So to become the pinnacle of IT, you need to be a chartered IT professional, in much the same way you might become a chartered accountant. Mm. But it means that you are recognized as being at the very top of your career, that you have the best professionalism within the work that you do and that you have um, good ethics in how you approach IT and that you support other people within the industry. Mm. So, so BCS, uh, being a, a member of BCS, what does it mean for somebody who is not based in the UK, who is not from the UK context, someone like most of the people listening to this channel? Well, it's internationally recognized, BCS, if you have a BCS qualification or you're a member of BCS, then it's a badge of professionalism, it's a badge of quality. It means that you, would, you aspire to the standards of a CIT, of a chartered IT profession. professional. It means that you're looking to support people within your industry. Um, and so it's recognized globally. Um, we have 65,000 members globally, which cover uh, members in Hong Kong, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, Europe, across Europe and America, Canada. We have branches and sections internationally, all of them focused on doing what we do best, which is IT for the benefit of society, which is what we're about. Mm. I know that BCS operates with a royal charter. What's the meaning of that? So the royal charter is, uh, again, it's, it's, it's given by government. It's given by government to to chartered bodies to uphold the British government, sorry, okay. to uphold the standards within any kind of profession. So um, you'll see many chartered bodies internationally and many of them operate globally. Um, and it's for that reason, it's, it's to give that sense of somebody who, who is involved in the industry, who upholds the professional ethics within the industry and the best practice within the industry who sets those professional standards that people can aspire to. Um, so yeah, so it's, 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 it's part of the chartered bodies. There's a number of them in different organizations, in different uh, professions. And we cover the IT profession and, and we're responsible for it. We feel responsible for it, particularly um, in the UK, but also now growing internationally. So moving on to the HEQ, the Higher Education Qualifications. What are the HEQ or what is the HEQ? What's it about? So HEQ is one of our oldest qualifications. It's been around for well over 20 years now and many graduates, thousands of graduates have gone through HEQ. Some of them at the very top of their profession today. So they've used it as a springboard into a career in IT. People like it internationally because it's flexible. It's, um, it covers many different aspects of IT so you can specialize. There are a total of 24 modules, all specializing in different areas of IT. Some are compulsory, so you have to sit some of them, and others are selective, so you can choose which path you wish to follow. 
and then you choose your path through to become a professional graduate um, at the end of the entire HEQ process. I know that um, there is the level four, level five, level six. What do those things mean? Level, because BCS um, are the chartered and the professional body, we also have to relate our education qualifications to the UK government. So they're off-qual regulated. So all educational qualifications in the UK um, are leveled by government and level four is the undergraduate level. Level six is a UK equivalent of a UK degree. We can't call ourselves a degree because we're the professional body, we're not a university. So it's, that's why it's called a professional graduate diploma, but it sits at degree level. Mm. You mentioned off call um, and it being off call regulated, being government regulated. So does that mean that the, the certificate is, is backed by the government, it's regulated as a standard British qualification. Oh, absolutely. Yes, you can't, you can't be off quite regulated. You've got a lot of things to do in terms of reporting, in terms of how you manage the, the exams, in terms of the quality of delivery. All of that is responsible, we're responsible to off -qual. and we have to file reports uh, regularly, annually, during the exam process to say that we are ma managing that standard, that we're delivering that standard. And if you don't deliver that standard, they will um, they will take you off the off qual regulated list. Yeah. So I, I know that um, BCS as um, uh, I know that it is possible to top up into a degree. So yes. a situation where one does the first level, which is level four, and so, then yeah. the second one, which is level five. And I know that that kind of candidates can um, go ahead to top up to a degree so they take one more year of um, education but this time within a university and um, they then earn a degree yeah. a bachelor's degree so something like that what, what's that about so um, people like a degree they like to know that it's a degree level um, and so people use HEQ as a stepping stone to a degree because we partner with universities um, it's, it, it takes time to relate to arrange those partnerships because you have to match the syllabus of HEQ to the syllabus of the degree. So what we have to do is our, our two organizations work together to make sure that when candidates complete diploma, that they are in a position to be able to do a degree if that, that's what they wish to do uh, in the UK or remotely, and that they don't feel out of place, that they feel that they have the knowledge and the foundations to complete the degree. And that's to BCS's benefit as well. We don't want people who complete diploma level to struggle to finish their degree. They have to finish their degree. Yeah. Can, can yeah. I add that as well as HEQ, we are, so our relationship with universities is very strong. So aside from HEQ, we also accredit degrees in the UK. So we accredit 106 university degree level courses with computer science at their core. So when you complete your degree, or even if you you go to a UK university, you will see that often their computer science degree is accredited by BCS. So it's a way of benchmarking standards within the university uh, network. So to, to rephrase that, do you mean to say that 106 universities in the UK are accredited, the computer science departments or computer science courses of 106 universities in the UK are accredited by BCS. They are 106 courses. I don't know, some some universities may do two computer science mm. courses, or there may be some elements of computer science in, a, in another course that they offer at degree level. Mm. But it's a good number. But mm. it's unusual for you to find a computer science degree, I would say in the UK, mm. that has not been accredited by BCS. Mm. I, I really wanted to just clarify, you, you know, so that the, the people watching can be aware that BCS also functions as an accrediting body for computer science. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And so that relationship with universities is there mm. so that if you go with a BCS qualification to a UK university, even if they're not on our list of accredited partners for HEQ, and that might be because the syllabuses don't match, their qualification, they will know about HEQ. Mm. They will know about BCS. Okay, um, 
so you, you mentioned that there, there are many success stories from the HEQ program. Can you share maybe one of them? My favorite is, uh, is a guy called Freddie Quack. He was based in Singapore. Um, he took HEQ back in uh, several years ago, the equivalent of it, what it was. Um, and it set him up on his career. It means that he's ever since he's been a member of BCS because they began his career and he recognizes that. He's now the CIO of Times Education Supplement, TES. They're a big educational uh, organization at higher education. Um, and he also is a fellow at BCS. He is, um, he leads our digital divide group as well. So our special interest group, which looks at the gap between those who have access to digital technology and digital education and those who don't. And he works very hard. He's, an, he's, a, he's for me, he's, a, he, he's, a, he's at the pinnacle of his profession and he delivers um, support to people um, throughout the UK and throughout, throughout the world with, with what he's done. He's a case study on our website if you wish to see it. Yeah, also Nigerians. Mm. IT is said to be that sector where there are lots of opportunities, there's a lot of money right now, a lot of people are rushing into tech. How, how does um, participating in the HEQ program, how does it position a candidate to be able to maybe get a job in tech or maximize the opportunities in tech? Well, as I said, the, the components within, the modules within HEQ are all different. So you're allowed to specialize in different areas of HEQ. They're updated. So our syllabus doesn't go out of date. It's not five, 10 years old. Everything is analyzed by subject matter experts within their, within their um, specialist area. So we, we know that what we deliver is up to date and relevant to today's um, graduates and what society, what businesses need today. IT is across everything in society from the gig economy to fintech to agriculture aquaculture it is fundamental to everything that we do and even more so in the future so the jobs of the future will involve tech in some shape way or form the demand is huge at the moment it's 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 it jobs in tech are so important on a globally it's they transition borders you can work remotely these, these days with your with the qualifications that you get and it just gives you access to all different kinds of industries so if you've got a tech qualification then you're going to get a job or your your skills will be in demand and my my final question on the heq um so if if a person des desires to um to study to, to be a part of the HEQ program. Number one, what are the requirements um, for doing so? And the second thing is, how much effort does the student need to put into the program? Okay, well, good question. Um, it's HEQ and it's BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. So I'm not going to say that doing HEQ is an easy way to an IT profession. You have to work at it. One of the ways that we assist that is by accrediting training providers. So making sure that they are at the standard to be able to deliver the qualification. And I would always recommend that for people looking at HEQ and looking at the IT profession, that they approach an accredited training provider from BCS to begin that journey. Because there is lots of information, there is lots of um, reading and, 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 and knowledge that needs to be transferred to students so they can complete the exam. So that's important. You've got to be committed, you've got to enjoy it. Um, it's a pathway, so you're on a journey through um, kind of either, you might be an HEQ student who's changing their career, who's, who's started on one path and wants to transition to another. You might be uh, an HEQ graduate doing a degree that then wants international recognition from their qualification. Or you might be just somebody who cannot um, afford to go to university and need a more cost-effective and flexible way, and you might be working part-time to be able to do the qualification. So that's the kind of people that HEQ attracts. And the best way to go through that program, because 
It is technical. It is an academic qualification. It leads to a computer science degree in the UK. It's challenging, but with the right training partner, with the right commitment, um, people can get through it and they're investing in their future. A number of people have the impression that um, the HEQs are a program that you can you can use for something like um, express entry to gain more points for Canada Express entry, um, which is true because um, it's um, an off-call regulated qualification, so it's, it's official, it's government backed. Um, but the the maybe worrisome part for me as somebody who runs an accredited center is that some people come with the impression that they can just come in one week to the exams and they, they can write those exams and they expect to pass. Is it really that easy? Does it work like that? No, it, it, it doesn't work like that. An HEQ is not designed for that. Yes, because there is so much demand for IT qualifications in Canada, in, in the US, in Europe, people can travel with uh, HEQ qualifications. But you've got to be committed. You've got to be committed and have an accredited training provider. You've got to be committed to the course. You've got to do the reading. You've got to put in the hours that are needed to complete the exam. There are no shortcuts to HEQ. If you take shortcuts, you will fail. So listen to your accredited training provider. Take your time. It's flexible. Um, read the syllabus. Engage with the courseware. Um, and you'll be fine, but but no shortcuts because it's not that kind of program. It's a professional degree that leads to a professional degree in the UK. So degree level a qualification. So you, you have to engage with it. It's not for um, travel points. Yes. So you, you heard it. Um, no shortcuts. No shortcuts. The BCS HEQs can be very powerful, can give you access, can give you knowledge in IT, can maybe even position you to get your dream job in tech, but you're going to have to put in the effort. If you'd like to know more about the HEQs, you can connect with us, you can send us an email. You can, of course, go to the BCS website. That's where you're going to find all of the information. I believe that's bcs.org.uk. Dot org. Or just dot org. Yeah. Uh, yes, bcs.org. Um, you can also send us a message. Um, I'll have our details um, in the description for this video. Feel free to chat with us and to connect with us, and we'll be happy to explain and to clear whatever doubts you may have. So, till I see you in my next video, my name is Ojuluji Adele. Make sure you subscribe and make sure that you come right back for the next piece of content. Bye.